Right, I tell you there, champs, and today we're going to have the shootout between the two best mobile processors on this planet. Yes, the 5900HX overclocked. This is overclocked, 45 watt, 80 watt boost. This is the M1 Mac, of course, and this is about 10 watts and does about a little bit over 20 watts boosted. Now, this is not a fair fight between these two because this thing here only has 8 gigs RAM. This thing here has 32 gigs RAM. It is overclocked. Really, this M1 should be compared to the U part, which would be like the 5800U, but this is all I have. So let's just do it. Let's find out which one is the fastest. I expect this would be, given that this is 8 cores, 45 watts as I said, four times more power than that, okay? So it doesn't matter even if it's in its base state, base state 45 watts, base state 10 watts. So that's over four times and then up to 80 watts and 20 watts. So it's not fair. I should be comparing the MacBook Pro 16, which I will compare. So make sure you subscribe, sub up. And these guys, they're trying to tax me outside the US. I pay tax in Australia, please. You can join my Patreon donation, join the channel, whatever. It's going to be hard to do YouTube with this tax crap. But anyway, let's see which one's faster. I'm going to do some benchmarks and then I'm going to do some real world tests. I'm going to do it plugged in and without the power as well. They're both plugged in at the moment. So let's do it. 5900HX overclocked versus M1. Okay, so here we're doing Cinebench on both of them. They're both plugged in on power. And as I said, this is on turbo mode, this um, Asus. So I've disabled the GPU on this uh, SCAR. So... It's not going to have GPU. This is 100% just a CPU shootout. And as you can hear, the fans kick in from this. It is in turbo mode. I can probably get a bit more out of it, but this is max overclock 80 watts, okay? Well, that's the maximum it can do. And the M1 is probably using about 20 watts at the moment. And we'll see what happens here. All right, so the results are in. 13,419 for this Ryzen. Remember, double the amount of cores or performance cores and, you know, four times the power. And we have 7,767. So, you know, yes, it is faster. Four times the power. That's what I would expect. But let's see single core and then we'll see him unplugged how we go there. And remember, the fan was on on this. No fan on that. Okay, let's check in here. It looks like the Apple's a little bit in front. It was neck and neck for quite a while. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, looks like the Apple's going to win here. I don't think it's going to be a great deal faster. You can see there it's a couple of blocks behind at the moment. And this is single core, of course, on power. All right, so we're on the home straight here. It looks like the Apple's going to win here. A few bars to go. How's your bar going? Um, it looks like Apple's bar's pretty big at the moment. Uh, looks like the AMD is going to be a little bit behind, but is it that much? It's like whatever. There you go. A few seconds there. But what does that equate to in score? 1,471 versus 1,506. Okay, so clearly this was faster. The fan was on. No fan on that. Um, or I couldn't hear it anyway. So that is what it is. I have a sneaking suspicion if I go into manual and I set the fan curve up really high, I could probably get a bit more out of this, but it is on turbo mode, which is its maximum performance mode. So let me know down there in the comments whether I should do that. Just go to manual and turn up the fans full blast. I'd rather sort of see, you know, what's going to be the difference in terms of noise as well. So you know, setting the fan to max sort of defeats that purpose. All right, so now let's run Geekbench. Every Apple person, Apple reviewer's favorite Geekbench. They love this thing. I don't really take too much notice of Geekbench, but let's do it. But as we saw in Cinebench, multi-core, of course, using a lot more power, etc. And this thing for single core, which you will use most of the time. So this will probably feel snappier and faster and a lot of stuff is single core. It is faster, but there wasn't a great deal of difference between that. Uh, there was quite a bit of a difference with the multi-core, but let's run uh, Geekbench. Let's run the CPU benchmark. Let's do right. it. So I apologize for not being able to expose for the white screen. It looks like the Mac, even though I started it last, is going to finish this test first, which makes me think it's going to be faster with this benchmark. It'll be interesting to see the multi-core because clearly the AMD was faster multi-core. Geekbench tells me the M1 is, I don't know if I trust that thing, but single core will be very interesting. There we go, boom, it did finish the test faster, even though it started last. And you can see there for single core, 1747, 
and for multi-core 7,691. So 1,747, 7,691. And let's see what happens with this AMD system here. Is the web browser gonna pop up? But see, even a web browser takes a longer time to launch and that's the m1 that's the magic of the m1 everything is so snappy right so geekbench we have a score of 1529 versus 1747 on the m1 so m1 faster with the single core that was reflected in cinebench 2 8546 for multi-core with the ryzen 5900 hx and 7691 with the m1 so it's a lot closer here in terms of multi-core that's why I don't really take that much notice of Geekbench, but the same thing again, right? Single core M1 King, multi-core, you know, it's using four times the amount of power and has more cores, of course. Yes, it is faster, but it's not that much faster than the M1 though, is it? Especially considering four times the power as well, right? And you can hear the fan, couldn't hear it on the M1. All right, so power bricks gone. Let's try those tests again. Okay, the Mac's just about to finish here. We have had a little bit of a drop in performance here on battery. This is on its, you know, most powerful power stage. The Mac, exactly the same. Actually, it's more on battery. So, Photoshop has just come out for the M1, so it is native now. Whereas Premiere Pro, you'll see later, is not native. But anyway, let's do it. Let's launch. Oh, the Mac, I launched later, the Mac, and boom. I launched it about a second later, and still, well, hello. Yeah, I could probably knock one out in that time. <laughs> I launched that later because I was having struggles there, but you can see it loads a lot faster. Okay, so let's launch a Premiere Pro and see how we do here. This is one of my projects, and take notice of how quickly it launches. So I think I've pressed it there, boom. And it only takes like a couple of seconds and it's launched. And that's the whole project, everything. Now, this is the Mac. I've already done this video before on how this performs. I need to remind you that this is eight gigabytes, okay? Eight gigabytes. And yeah, all right. So we're looking for the green light there. This is 4K project, LUT applied, H.264. And scrubbing, nice and smooth, okay? And eight gigs, all right? eight gigs nice and smooth scrub in there now let's play it back and it plays it back all green LUT applied 4k h.264 wolf amazing okay so let's do the same thing on this and take note of how long it takes to load and this is the final version of course actually quite snappy that was okay so we have the same project here we have the green light there we are at full Let's see the scrubbing performance. As you can see, uh, no, nah, see it's lagging. See that? It's lagging. And this is the same exact project. No, it's not too bad. Let's try it again. No, nah, it, it lags here and there. Anyway, let's just see if we can play it. And no. You can't play it, can't play it back. This is the latest Ryzen, eight cores, overclocked, everything, everything. And this is why people still use Intel because um, quick sync and stuff like that. You can actually play this with the 11th generation, you know, quad core parts like Ultrabooks. And this gaming beast, I mean, if I have the GPU enabled, yes, it'll play it back. But the CPU, we're doing a CPU test here. It's not playing it back, so I'm not even going to go to 6K HEVC because there's no point. It won't play it back. It doesn't play this back. If I disable that LUT, let's see. Yeah, so it will play it back if I get rid of the color grading or the color correction, whatever you want to call it, and the uh, um, you know adjustment layer there. But um, that is what it is. I don't know what to tell you. Let's see how fast it can export this project compared to the Mac. Okay, so let's export this project H.264 to H.264 YouTube preset and actually they're using hardware encoding on both of these and this has got a lot more RAM. I expect this to be RAM limited in rendering uh, so yeah, it will be slowed down a bit by that. This should destroy it, come on, even if that was doing software encoding, which it's not. Okay, we're rendering here and what we can see there, this is plowing through it. the Ryzen system. It still says nine minutes to go, whereas this one says on the Mac here, eight minutes to go, but that's stuck on 1%. It is beta software, so I don't know. It's probably playing up. 
Oh, so here we go. It just seems to be stuck. Okay, I have actually used this before, and from memory, it was about eight minutes it took to render. And by the way, this riser system is how many minutes now? We're on five minutes 30, and it says three minutes and a half left. So, be roughly what this probably usually does. It's clearly stuck, there's something wrong. I'm actually going to export the XML now and just get rid of this. Uh, it's not ready for prime time, this uh, Premiere Pro. Don't DaVinci me because I had no idea how to use that thing. Um, but I will export this in Final Cut and I'll show you how it should perform. Okay, I'll tell you one thing that annoys me with these Macs is USB not working. The light's on, it just doesn't detect the text on this. Um, does it with my audio interface too? I don't know if it doesn't like USB too. It's just finicky with USB this thing and doesn't even get full speeds on some drives as well. So there is that USB sort of issue still there. All right, so just like magic, it's in Final Cut now, the same project. Look at that scrubbing. It's on full quality here. And yes, it plays it back, no problems. And we'll see how fast it exports now. We did have that problem with Premiere Pro. It wasn't exporting. I don't know why. But it did actually take around 8 minutes 47 when it did actually export from this when I've tested it before. This one took 9 minutes and 36 seconds. 9 minutes and 27, actually. So... Now let's see how fast it exports it in Final Cut. I mean, it's a different program, but I couldn't do it on the other one, so whatever. Well, let's just do it. And we're exporting, and let's just have a quick look. Already 3%. Woof, this thing is going to absolutely fly. Of course, Final Cut optimized it, but it just shows you, even with 8 gigs, if Premiere get their act together, even with the AMD system, it's got to be fair here. If I engage the GPU, it takes like two and a half minutes to do that render because it's optimized for GPUs now. But if we're talking CPU to CPU, it's not optimized for the AMD. It's not really optimized for the M1 either. And it is beta software, Premiere Pro. But look at that, it's 20% already. This is going to take minutes anyway. Okay, looks like we're in the home straight here. We're getting to 100%. I can see on my stopwatch over here, we're 2 minutes and 21. 2 minutes 20. Oh, there we go. 2 minutes 23. All right. So 2 minutes 23. All right. So I've got to explain something to you. Even with the GPU enabled, it's not as fast as 2 minutes and 23. Now, this is Final Cut, and this is what you get with optimization. This is around 2 minutes 32 with the GPU enabled. So this is actually faster than that. But different software of course anyway oh have a look at that i pulled out wrong according to apple they want to tell me how to mount things dismount things you didn't mount it properly are they sort of perverts they want to mount everything all right so i'm playing fortnite here and i'm getting over 40 frames per second 1280p high because of the aspect ratio i cannot get 1080 so it's over 1080 it's like 2200 by 1280 and it's still doing over 40 frames per second, it's doing like 45 frames per second, up to 45, between 38 and 45. Now this thing here, same settings, 1080p, and this is using, not the graphics card of course, and we are getting 32 frames per second. So lower resolution and less FPS. So that's about 30, 32, 31, well, 35 down here, but there's not much detail down here, I guess. Oh, what do I find? There, I found a sword. But there's no way known that this is going to do the same as this because this is high resolution. It's doing over 40, and this thing's struggling to get over 30. So it's not doing much over 30. Um, and, yeah, it's using the uh, internal GPU. So it's using the Radeon GPU. Look, it's doing 30 FPS now. That is a built-up area, though. Even if I go to somewhere more sparse, the highest I've seen is 35, and this is doing over 40 at a high resolution. So, yeah, this thing is amazing. This laptop, oh man, I love this freaking laptop. And by the way, the fan I can't even hear it, all I can hear is that fan, by the way. But this is amazing for gaming and stuff like that. Of course, you're not going to be using the internal GPU, you're going to be using that RTX 3080 16 gig. And this is a beast. And once that's enabled, this is cool. But I can tell you now, people laugh at Intel, right? Oh, you use more power and, you know, the Ryzen's a bit faster and, you know, it uses less power. It doesn't use four times as much power like, you know, here. And even if I compared this to the U part, 5800U, which is a 15 watt part, that still boosts to 60 watts. So it's still three times the amount of power in this and that won't be as powerful as this. So, 
yeah, I don't know. Let me know down there in the comments. Catch you in the next one. Telly ho.